The man behind Warren Buffett, brilliant, a renaissance man, impeccable integrity in his 90s and almost blind and still working every day. Buffett's only partner, in many ways, the architect of Berkshire Hathaway's success, Charlie Munger, and the art of being rational on Business Talk with Jim Campbell. Oksana Dubovina is a Russian national born in Uzbekistan. She received law degrees from the University of Moscow and the University of Vienna. Spent 10 years working in international law in Vienna before moving to the United States, where she's in Houston now, I believe. And her new book, The Art of Being Rational, Charlie Munger. Welcome, Oksana. How are you? Hello, Jim. Good morning. Uh, good we, morning, sir. How are you doing? Very, I'm doing great. Very good. Thanks for doing this. As I, Charlie and uh, Warren have been my business heroes for a long time. In fact, my producer and I have been out in Omaha in the uh, the hotel where most people stay, and we broadcast from the hotel lobby for the annual meeting. Um, and surprisingly, this is the first show we focused on Charlie Munger, which is why I was when I saw your. Uh, book. I was anxious to have it. Tell us, um, first of all, tell us who Charlie Munger is for people that don't know and why you, you why you picked him. Most people obviously, you know, pick Warren Buffett um, to focus on. Go ahead. Um, yeah, it's a very, very peculiar question because when I first uh, read about Charlie, I get fascinating by his personality. I mean, he reminds me kind of my grandfather. His values are so old-fashioned and uh, He's full of wisdom. I mean, this is a guy who wants um, you wants to study him forever. It's a uh, so peculiar subject. I mean, uh, you have to know who you are first of all, and I get a lot of similarity between us, like old-fashioned ideas. And he's very patient. He is uh, always learning. He uh, has a certain discipline. He's like uh, extremely in- interesting personality to learn. I love it. I mean, I, it's a it's very, very interesting person to know. And if you really integrate it in his mind and you see his ideas, it's a different world. <laughs> you find something new for yourself every time you learn about him. Fascinating guy. He is brilliant. He's sort of a reincarnation, as you call it in the book, of Ben Franklin. Talk about how he's a sort of integrates disciplines very much, very different than Buffett, who's very focused. Well, they are different. I believe they have a different personality. Buffett is an uh, extremely intelligent guy. He is sit all the time with learning. I mean, this all of this results, this, all of the cash Berkshire earned for the years, it is not a surprise. This, both guys are very much on the discipline, on the safe side, on the value investing. And value investing is a long-time investment when you have a really long attention span. So you have to know what you're doing. They both have a certain competences, and they learn a lot about them. So you, the trick is you always learn something new. You have to follow the path. Uh, Buffett, uh, he is uh, more, I think, I think this suits very well together because um, Munger makes him uh, more quiet. I think Munger, Munger's ideas are more like, like you really, really um, follow of uh, Benjamin Franklin. He is uh, more on the quiet side of investing. He's more patient. I have a feeling Buffett is, is uh, more a bit a gambler personality, but I think Charlie makes him calm down a bit, and uh, he's influenced significantly on his strategy and philosophy. If you, if you look at through the years, it is how it is. Yeah. Interesting, because um, this multidisciplinary, he, he looks in the sciences, he looks in all kinds of places he puts together for insights. He does stuff like build college dorms, which is, you know, pretty uh, interesting. Let me ask you this, because here you are, you're, you're in Russia, the Soviet collapse happens. Um, you can tell us your story a little bit. How, how did you, you're in a society that's not even capitalist. How did you glom on to, uh, you know, Berkshire Hathaway? Yeah, well... Of course, if you go inside of the history, that's never been easy task. Uh, the countries after the um, Soviet Union collapse, um, a lack of leadership. You feel lack of leadership, and you feel. Um, but now the new generation of uh, people, they of course they start to learn some new material. They start to focus more on international norms and standards. But the country left us after the Soviet Union. They are they are economically poor, and their lack of leadership. But I think now we are speaking about the different times. They start to do something, and uh, we see a, a slightly progress is down. 
And I believe more people have to learn the Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett as, as you learn Darwin or you learn a great scientist. This is the greatest scientist of our century right now. You have to follow and have to learn what they have to say. Tell us, uh, you know, Charlie's background. He had a lot of tragedy early. And, um, and then, of course, he's got the blindness now and, he, and reading is his whole life. Tell us a little bit about his tragedy and how he overcame that. Charlie is the guy uh, who loves Confucius. I mean, uh, this old uh, Chinese values. Uh, he doesn't feel it is a tragedy. I don't think Charlie ever feel a self pity about himself. I think if yes. you look inside of his life, he's a full of rationality. This is a guy who is not emotionally attached to something. I don't think so. I don't think he really inside of the emotional game of life. Life is very tricky. Look it. It can happen, everything with you, it can happen. And you have to be strong, you have to be enough strong and enough confidence to get it over. And I think that Charlie is the greatest example of our time who really focused on uh, rationality, not to, not to be emotional, not to think about bad times. And you just go ahead and uh, follow the right path. Let me ask you this, because it's always fascinated me. Everybody's heard of Buffett. He's the out front face of Berkshire Hathaway. It's his baby. How has Charlie managed uh, his ego to play second fiddle and have no problem with that? I think in, in uh, life, you certain sometimes you have to play different roles, right? And uh, if you, it is very hard to find a suitable partner in business. The people are different. You're born different. And some people are gambler, and then some people are quiet, and some people are passive. So it's all about your personality. It's all about about uh, how you can uh, be uh, dominating or not. So it has to work together. And I think Charlie, Charlie is and has an excellent position right now because Buffett is more active. He loves people. He loves to be in the public. He loves to speak. And Charlie prefers intellectual, uh, very very high intellectual. Um, contest. He doesn't uh, like fools. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't even answer the question what are uh, like fools or like, uh, <laughs> he doesn't like. So he's a very direct guy, and uh, and I love it. I always find it interesting that um, the, uh, he cannot abide fools, as you just said. He says exactly what he feels, and 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 Buffett's right. a contrarian, but he's a people pleaser. He doesn't like to offend people when he answers questions. Yes, that's that's correct, sir. Buffett is, um, I think Buffett learned uh, how, how to please people, how to win a friend. I think it's very important qualities. I think people love him. I think all of these people who are coming to Berkshire events, which is 40,000, 50,000 people, yeah. they are really rich people who are coming. If you see inside of the game, it's the, the people uh, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and they stand up in the line to yep. see what Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger has to say. And it's a significant, I mean, it's a really learning and wisdom searching. These people are addicted to a certain attitude in life, right? They are looking for Warren and Charlie has to say. I mean, that's fascinating. I think it's a culture of... Uh, Buffett, it's gives, a, it's a, Buffett, gives. Buffett gives Munger the credit for architecting Berkshire. Part of that is buying great businesses at fair prices as opposed to Buffett just look for, you know, bottom, you know, value stuff. Do you, how do you define yeah. the, the arch, that he architected Berkshire? Yeah, well, if you see the early Buffett, Buffett is influenced uh, tremendously by uh, Benjamin Graham. So, um, but uh, uh, later in life, when uh, Warren Buffett lost his father, he was, I think, he, uh, to a certain extent, he was looking for a partner who can influence his philosophy and who has not a gambler personality, but somebody stable, somebody with right ideas, somebody trusted partner. And when he found Charlie, Charlie is intellectual, who happened to be in value investing, who was already very, very successful lawyer before, and Buffett turned him away from the law to focus only on the value investing. Uh, I think um, Charlie made a significant progress with uh, Buffett, and uh, he influenced tremendously to put Buffett not inside of the gambler, not inside of the, the stocks that are really risky. Uh, they just start to buy Coca-Cola. They start to buy really great companies, great businesses with a great management. 
I think it is, if you see and if you read the Berkshire Hathaway annual reports, you will see a tremendous progress through the years. And it's great. He always refers to Charlie as the abominable no man keeping uh, Warren from doing bad deals. This is Business Talk with Jim Campbell of the Business Radio Net- Network, 350 stations around the country. We're going to look at some values of Charlie Munger in our next segments. From Philly to Fresno, Brooklyn to Boston, Data Cable Superstars has the best prices on installation of Cat5 and Cat6 wiring for cameras, computers, phone, and data, specializing in off-peak installs as to not interrupt your workflow. If this is an I-need-it-done-yesterday situation, then it's time to call Data Cable Superstars at 203-942-1427 or go to datacablesuperstars.com. That's datacablesuperstars, all one word, dot com. Data Cable Superstars, where estimates and Big ideas are always free. We're back. Our guest is Oksana Dubrovina. She's an expert on Berkshire's Munger, as we've been seeing. Explain to people what the art of being rational means. Well, the art, what is the rationality? Rationality is uh, a certain extent of wisdom and uh, learning quality that you... You can't born with rationality, of course. Uh, there is a DNA for that. But to a certain extent, his ability to learn and concentrate on the problem and ignoring the emotional side of life, uh, ignoring and think for yourself mantra. So you are not, to a certain extent, you are not care what the people have to say, what they are thinking. You need to think for yourself. And to think for yourself is not that easy task. To think for yourself is a rationality. So you have to come down and think what you what is the right solution for this problem or situation in life. I particularly find it interesting in this era because we have all this fake news. Um, the, the era of Trump is almost ideology and the opposite of rationality. Charlie, I learned in your book, doesn't use Twitter or uh, a, a cell phone. I always say ideology helped destroy the Soviet Union. Um, can a person become rational? Yeah, one of course one can have uh, some abilities to learn, but that's a, not an easy task. I think your life learn, uh, learning and focus what you have to say, what um, just ignoring what is happening around. I mean, it's a hard work to do, but that I believe it's a certain moral obligation. For you to start seeing for yourself, switch off the news, and just uh, what is the right solution? What I'm doing right now? Is it the right situation to be in? Is it the right to people? Is it really? The stocks is, uh, I think it's a, a lot of gambler. I think it's uh, the people are gamblers, and uh, but I'm not care about them. I mean, I know what I'm investing in. I'm unhappy about that. So it's a long time investing. It's a long orientation, and I love it. That's the most important thing to do. And what I what I like about your book, which is interesting, is it may surprise people looking at the two greatest uh-huh. two greatest investors, is that it's the values behind them um, that that make them so successful. And you focused on the values, not so much on the on investment strategy. Having said that, I want to start off. It's uh, one of the key ones is being contrarian. Um, most people believe that diversification of your portfolio, of course, o- over as much as you can get, as many different um, funds is the right thing. But tell us, Charlie's into a few big bets, right? Right, that's correct, Jim. So the, um, the deserve, uh, there, there is no uh, sense inside of being putting your money all around. You have, if you really want to understand what happened, you put just one sector and you bet on a certain thing, what you find is uh, trusted, that you love a business is about that. So it's not only the stocks. You just see the reflection. You see what businesses are doing. Are they doing great? Uh, is the management is great? Do you trust these people? You have to follow the game and to be able to make the right decision. This is what Charlie is about, which is um, Warren Buffett is doing. He's basically looking for mispriced things, but in his certain areas of competence. All right, I want to a- ask you to explain the psychology of humus, human misjudgment and mental mo- models are very important to Munger, first conclusion bias, things like that. 
what what do mental models mean in in Charlie's mind? What are we talking about here? Well, actually, by the way, that um, the Clay Christensen, the Harvard professor who died yesterday, I believe two days ago, he was a very big researcher of yes, cre- uh, Christian, yeah, cre- Christensen, yeah, right. I was surprised that it's a very, very bad thing, but it happened. He, he made a tremendous effort on Harvard University to study Munger's model. Well, what we are speaking, Charlie Munger's model is a certain ecosystem, so he built it for himself. Uh, the areas um, of different, um, so if you take inside, it's a philosophy, it's, um, it's finance, it's economy, it's a uh, behavior of people. So, but if you take it to basics, here's a study of human nature, first of all. So, basics, mistakes, and faults, what are happening to ignoring the human nature. As example, it's easy. So, just try not to be envy. Just try to control your emotions. Just uh, be a certain, be a good person. To understand the faults and mistakes of ours and not to make your own mistakes. Now, not, not many people like him, as you say, reminded you of your grandfather. This this one interests me. The secret, right. the secret, and you were saying before he doesn't believe in self pitying. He sees it as annoying and counterproductive, even though he's had a lot of tragedy, including losing his eyesight right now. The secret to happy, right. the secret to happiness is to lower your expectations. Right, that's a very important task, sir. I I believe really, when one is uh, on the right path of life, is to lower your expectations. Uh, if you have a high standard in life, if you if you're used to certain luxury or you're used to some certain very, very good things, and then it's so hard to go down. But this is Mango. What Mango says is you have to follow uh, to be a good person and just to ignore the outside factors. So if you're a good person, you you have the right principles. You are never envy. You're, you're on the right path. So this is the path you have to follow. Now, this one is always the opposite of uh, Wall Street and tough for anybody. Be patient no matter how right. be patient no matter how long it takes. Right. It doesn't matter. It is, um, it is only the short period of time. You have to suffer some pain in order to think uh, without any emotions, act without any emotions. Well, it is very hard. It's uh, easy to say that kind of things, and, uh, but I think it's a very hard pa- a path to follow. It's everyday work. It's everyday learning. It's trying to figure out what your brain can do better. And the kids are watching you because we are, we are not only educating ourselves. I think we're educating the people who are around us, our family, the kids who follow you, right? They're watching you. <laughs> Patience is tough, I'll tell you that. Um, we've talked around this, but, but I think it's important to talk uh, about it specifically because it's what both of them see themselves. They see themselves as learning machines. What does that mean? Yeah, every day learning, every day you get up and you know what you, you what you book some focus, focus on. I think Charlie and um, Warren Buffett, if you follow them, if they have a tremendous amount of books you, you have to read to, in order to understand their way of thinking. Uh, well, if you follow my blog, there is a lot of information about the books uh, Munger and Charlie, uh, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett recommended to you. In order to understand, that's not a simple task to do, but it's a lot of fun once you start to be inside to understand how they are wor- uh, really thinking. That's a lot of fun. You just need to follow the path. What I find really uh, interesting, too, is that they view themselves, particularly Buffett, as teachers. People think that they're in it to make money, but he's actually giving all of his money away, and Berkshire is his platform to teach, right? Yes, he wants. Warren Buffett wants to see himself as a teacher, and he's a great, of course, he has a great mind, and uh, he could influence, and he influenced nowadays the new generation of value investors, and they love him. Uh, Charlie is uh, is on different path. You see, Charlie is. I think he has a more close personality. He's more shy guy, and uh, but he also made a tremendous effort for the worldly wisdom. But uh, there are two different personalities, as as we discussed before. <laughs> so two listen. different types of people. Listen to business talk with Jim Campbell. More mongerisms coming up.
Are you from California, Illinois, New York, Georgia, or any of the other 39 states that charge state income tax? Does your state claim you owe them any amount of back taxes? Or have you not filed in years? Is your heart pounding because you know they're wrong or you just don't have the money? Don't fight the state income tax board alone. The tax doctor is here to help you. The state is much more aggressive than the IRS in collecting taxes. They have the power to take your home, your car, your driver's and business licenses, even garnish your wages, freeze your bank accounts, and go after your spouse. Solve all your income tax problems permanently and keep more of your hard-earned money. Make this 100% guaranteed risk-free call right now. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. Our guest, Oksana Dubrovina, she's written The Art of Being Rational about Charlie Munger. And um, uh, we've talked around this one, too, but uh, I want us to focus on it a little bit. And we're going to talk about a case study. But setting high standards, honesty, discipline, those are values that have been disappearing. And we see it in our country right now where the president, according to Washington Post, has told 14,000 lies since uh, he's been in office. But talk about the importance of honesty, discipline, high standards. Yeah, the honesty is a very, very important task. And I think, by the way, you're doing great, Economic of America. You're doing great. It's a fantastic country to live in, and it has a, such a good, a bright future. I really believe so. That is why we are here right now. Um, character is very important, uh, straight and honesty. Um, well, this is how how the great mind works. So if you fake, the people will feel it. The people know that you have to be really, really focused on what you're doing. And um, yeah, I think economically you're doing great. The U.S. doing great. I think that's very significant significant uh, change right now. The last years, so you see why we are here in Houston right now. We are building a factory, and uh, and we are so excited about that. I think it's a great, bright future. Let's talk US about. Has a great, great future. It's funny since you since you brought that up. Let's go. Let's go to Russia. Right. Uh, Putin has, um, you know, like two thirds of the economy is in the hands of a small, relatively small group of oligarchs. Right? Is is is, is and that we've just been through the Ukraine. There's a lot of corruption there, et cetera. Does does not having, um, you know, pure market, rational, honest. Uh, rule of law really affect a country's growth opportunities from having lived over there yourself? Mm, I don't know much about that, Jim. I, I don't think I'm an expert on uh, deciding uh, on on that kind of stuff. I think I'm more like to Munger and Warren Buffett <laughs> philosophy. And uh, you know that I think it's a more intelligent path like to know what you're doing and to follow the certain people of a high integrity Certain people are too really motivated, and you need to really honest to love them to follow the path. I think that's important for everybody in life to just to follow what you love to do, and you find the right people to follow. That's also an enormous task. When I was found uh, Charlie Munger, I was really happy. You know, somebody who reflects my values, somebody who I happy to read about. I think that uh, it's fascinating. You have to find the certain people who you really love and follow them and not to be inside of the games that you don't understand. Very well said. In fact, Buffett always says, choose your heroes wisely. That's so Im- enormous important, right? You're affected by the people who you choose. You love them honestly, and you just follow the path. You try to, to adapt to their values, and uh, that's, that's a lot of fun to do. And uh, I think you start to be a better person to the extent we are speaking you start to improve yourself. This is a very important task to do. And uh, this is a famous Buffett quote that he, he used, Lose money, uh-huh. and I will forgive you. Lose reputation of the company, and I will be nasty. Let's talk a little bit. Tell us about the Salomon Brothers case. Well, uh, it's again the topic was not the, really my area of competence, um, but um, as um, it was a very hard time, so I think for America to be inside of kind of situation like that, and Warren Buffett, uh, Berkshire Hathaway was enormous, um, was um, in, invested hardly in that kind of stuff, and when it all happened, it I think the Warren Buffett is the person who really saved that from the crash. 
and saved a lot of um, a lot of people from being in a very very bad situation. But it has extremely um, focused and uh, problem solving mind. I think he is extremely bright, and that situation was a lot of stress for him. They both was very stressed on the phone all time long. But they managed to do that. I think uh, they managed to do that very good, and um, it was not influenced significantly on the others, right? So he 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 was a step up. He put the right management in the game, yes. and uh, he is extremely intelligent guy. He had, in fact, um, he uh, at, at Salomon he had a big stake in it. And uh, someone, a bond trader, co- tried to corner the market in treasury bonds by bill, uh, bidding and buying more than you're, right. you're allowed to buy. And it almost destroyed uh, Solomon. And Buffett had to come in and be the acting CEO, which he didn't really like because he doesn't like to do, you know, day-to-day management, particularly out of Wall Street. And then, as you said, he picked the right management and, and, and saved the company using his words. But he made it clear that, you know, you don't play around with the reputation uh, of a company. No. It's more important even yep. than the money. Let's talk about Wall Street right. Wall Street now, because Charlie in particular is very critical uh, of Wall Street. First of all, there's conflicts of interest everywhere. I like this quote. You have everywhere there is a large commission, there's a high probability of a ripoff. <laughs> talk a little bit about Wall, <laughs> a Wall Street casino mentality. Yeah, um, the gamblers are gamblers, and they will be where they are, and uh, we cannot change them. We can't change ourselves. You, Some people are born like gamblers, and that's fine with that. But um, not everybody wants to be on a certain path. I think the Buffett and Munger, they prefer to sleep well at night, night and there is uh, doesn't matter what is commission or money. It's, it's not about the speculation, right? It's a totally different game. It's a game of learning to make the right decision and to bet on the right things. Why should it be different? I mean, uh, the Wall Street guys, it's a different world. But you, of course, I, I'm, I don't think I have a right to educate them. But to a certain extent, you need to know who you are. Are you on there? What is the personality you have? Are you a gambler? Are you a speculator? Do you like all of these tri- tricky, risky stocks? And why should you play that game? Mm. I, I will never do that. I love what I have, and I sleep well at night. You know, you just get up, and you know what you're owning, and you're happy about that. I just want to increase what I have. Yep, and and Warren always likes when the market goes down because he can buy stuff cheaper. What I found interesting interesting in your your book, too, is saying that, um, I think it's Charlie. Charlie doesn't think Wall Street's driven by greed so much as envy. What does that mean? Well, that's... um, Certain uh, greed in life is um, kind to extent to a certain extent is a good thing. So you're motivated by greed. You try to make yourself stronger. It's all about the capitalism you want. It's all the game of life is to make yourself stronger. But envy is something what you that you have to read of. Envy is one banker make uh, two or three and five million more a year than another, and they start have an envy uh, feeling, or oh, he has a better car, he has Ferrari, I don't. I think that's, uh, that's a bad, that you're in the bad hands, you're in a bad game. So that's not my world, that's, um, that's not who I want to be. I never envy, you know, I learned it from Charlie, you don't do that. You just never do that, you never compare yourself. If you want that money, you will get that money, but you have to work on that. You have to make yourself better. What are you doing better? Okay, I'm, now I'm learning Chinese. All right, that's good for you. It's a lot of hard work. It is a certain you get about 6 o'clock and you learn that, right? Go ahead. Make yourself better. Make a progress. It's all about the cat- capitalism. It's a great. But don't make the envy. Don't see it yourself at home and say, oh, this guy have. I don't have that. I'm so poor. Pity. <laughs> Small thing. So that's not uh, the right path. It's interesting because he, he says a lot of the CEOs, for instance, they see another firm on Wall Street do something, they have envy, and then they go do it, and it's stupid. Uh, let's look at another uh, value, the mistakes of omission. Learning from your mistakes, you have a thing, learn to kill your most beautiful ideas. Um, talk about it. And Charlie particularly has helped uh, Warren um, avoid making mistakes. Yes, it is. Um, it is I think it is. Uh, they influence each other. To a certain extent, but um, Charlie is um, 
Charlie's more on the safe path. I think when Charlie, um, Charlie's money is uh, actually also in the very safe hands. Charlie uh, uh, likes to make um, uh, the right decision. What does it mean? The Charlie's money is uh, in the Berkshire Hathaway, and I think he has some partly in Costco and some Asian fund together with Lilu. Uh, he's an Asian fund who manager. He's a very, very uh, great person. Uh, to follow, so I recommend it to follow Lilo. And there is a Monish Pabrai of Pabrai Funds, which is also an excellent manager, what I'm following uh, everywhere with information about him. I just love to do that. Um, one fi- right. Talk about how they avoid being driven by ego and stress, which they call causing dysfunction as we finish off the last minute of this segment. Uh, so not to influence by ego, and uh, try to be able to change your decision when necessary. What does it mean? You have to, to, to a certain extent, you have to understand the game you're in. In uh, Some businesses are drying, some uh, being, uh, as, a, as a Clay Christensen told us, uh, and if you read inside of his Innovator's Dilemma, he, he, he told uh, a lot of things about the innovations, about the businesses, that the, some businesses are certain to be in them placed in um, in the ecosystems and you see the ecosystem is dying and you see another businesses are coming and in order to understand that um, you have to learn the certain ideas and when it is happening you have to take out the money uh, from the um, businesses and put it inside of the other businesses for example you have to be able to understand not influence what the people on there all right news radio saying you Final last little segment coming up. Why aren't there more Berkshire Hathaway? Would you like to host your own radio program or podcast? Park City Productions 06604 is a Bridgeport, Connecticut-based radio broadcast solutions company. Follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Park City Productions 06604. Call us at 203 522-8801. Aksina Dobrinova on Berkshire Hathaway's Charlie Munger. And this is where we, we ended up the last segment. Why do you think there hasn't been more Berkshires copied or their approach copied? Um, their success is unbelievable since the mid-1960s, averaging 21% compounded growth. Why is Berkshire so unique? Life is not a very fair thing. And um, if you want to fail, that's up to you. But if you really want to be successful, you have to fall on certain ideas in life. You have to take... I'm, I'm sure you have to take some certain idea from the past because the right people already died. And uh, Berkshire is a collection of the great businesses, of the great ideas, of the great mind. It was not happened for one year or two. It takes a long path to structure. And um, you have to be able to learn the best ideas and implement it inside of your stocks to buy the right things to purchase the great businesses. So it's um it's a very peculiar subject, but you have to be able to learn continuous learning the right ideas and motivated by people who surround it. They already did that, but you take the ideas from the books. The books are open resources. You learn that, and you try to make uh, yourself better every day. All right, it all gets back to character. I want to read this one. I always like when hiring. Look for three things: intelligence, energy, and character. If they don't have the last one, the first two will kill you. Because if you're going to hire somebody that doesn't have character, you better hope they're dumb and lazy because if they're smart and energetic, they'll get you into all kinds of trouble. It's all about character, right? Right. You found it in my, inside of my book, right? The Art of Being a yes. Rational Charlie yeah. Manga. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I think Warren Buffett loves the uh, businesses that are controlled by very intelligent people who are knowing what they're doing. The people... Um, uh, the people, uh, he not choosing himself that people, he found them or they already uh, existing in the businesses what he is. But it's very important, like what we see now with G.P. Morgan, right? He is uh, highly invested now because of the CEO. He is a great guy, absolutely. When you, when you see his interviews, he is bright, he is a fantastic guy. I think the Buffett is very fascinated by certain personalities, by certain type of people 
who really behave honest and who is intelligent and who is uh, motivated enough to be in the businesses. Buffett has a great feeling for people. So he recognizes these people, this, uh, this great minds inside of the game, inside of the business, and then bet on that. It, I find it interesting, too, that I think Charlie said this uh, in your book, quote, do not have a master plan, which sounds different than, oh, i got to plan my life. What does no. that mean, do not have one? Right. So the certain people, they like to follow. They draw the plan at home, one, two, three, and that have to follow that through the years or through some certain. But life is changing, and uh, you have to bet on a certain things, and you have to recognize when the game is changed, it's not going your way, it's not going the way you, you planned. You have to move around. You have to stop on doing that. You have to stop buying. You have to stop worrying. You have to know what are you doing. So to be able to change your mind is very important, though. but it's not everybody can do that. It's not learning. Uh, it's not uh, automatically. You have to know what you're doing and uh, be to a certain extent ready to change it. Why not? The, change, uh, the facts are changed, and I change my mind. So you have to be able to change. That's not an everybody task, right? Right. We, uh, we buy something and we're sure we make the right thing. We're sure that's the correct path. But sometimes you have to rethink it and think, all right, that's not my game. I want to be out. You have to think for yourself, not to be influenced by the local news or something like that. <laughs> what do you think uh, happens to Berkshire after Munger and Buffett are gone? They're both, uh, I think Warren is 85 and he's in his young 90s. They're not youngsters. What do, you, what do you predict or what do you see? Well, I think they're doing great. I think there are some successes who are, um, who are right now in the Berkshire, they have um, a lot of uh, years-long practices, and to be Warren and Charlie partners, and they're managing a portfolio. I think they are doing great to a certain extent. I think Charlie is very happy about their successes. So, so far as I understand, uh, they are motivated people. They are extremely intelligent people. I think it's going to be great um, uh, I think it's going to be fine, and uh, of course nobody is that intelligent than Warren and Charlie, but I think to a certain extent the culture will continue to do great. I think the Berkshire will do great. I agree with it's that. It's a collection of businesses, right? It's a collection of businesses. If business is doing great and if they follow their path of recognizing the market and not influenced by all of the news and think for yourself to increase their knowledge and try to be better every day, I think you're on the right path. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. They built it, as you said, the culture forever. And I, from an interview, right. from an interview I did on Buffett, uh, I think he plans if his brain hangs in there to work to like ninety nine. So he might still be around for the ten fifteen years um, if, if if his health stays uh, good. Uh, as we finish up here, is Charlie's giving uh, all his money to philanthropy. Is that right? Or well, Charlie is. Um uh, he loves uh, to uh, to give his money to philanthropy for educational purposes for universities. If you follow the path, you know that he greatly um, uh, give a lot of fortune for Michigan University and for Huntington Library in Los Angeles. And that's uh, the things that he understand. He doesn't like to throw the money on people to a certain extent. He likes to control what he is doing. I think he enjoy the process of doing what he is doing. Are you going to, what are you doing? Oh, t tell folks, you you are the creator of the Charlie Munger Almanac, Almanac Group on Facebook. Tell people what that is, how they find it. Right, people can uh, easily find it on Facebook. It calls Charlie Munger Almanac. It has seven, something, 7,000 people all around. We have the greatest investors of our time, Lilu and Monish Pabrai and Whitney Tilson, who are also inside and uh I love to do that. I like to collect the information. I'm looking forward every day to learn something new for myself. Uh, so it's I make myself a better person through that. If you're learning every day something new, if you're on the right path, if you surround uh, with the right ideas and principles, you're doing great. It, you have a bright future. There is there is no question about that. And this has been a it's been a fast hour, very fascinating on Charlie. And as I say, very interesting that we've just talked about an investment genius. And really, all we've talked about is his values. And um, it's sort of like Oksana's on a moral uh, crusade, and that's Oksana Bubrinova. 
And uh, her book, The Art of Being Rational, Charlie Munger. And again, she's the creator of the Charlie Munger Almanac group on Facebook. This has been Business Talk with Jim Campbell. And we are just rolling out Jim Campbell Radio on YouTube. We're going to have consolidate all of our shows um, from both Forensic Talk and Business Talk. And if you would uh, search Jim Campbell Radio and subscribe, we'd appreciate that. And then you'll get access to all our shows directly. Thanks again to Oxana. Thanks to our national audience for listening. See you on the next edition of Business Talk with Jim Campbell. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Are you from California, Illinois, New York, Georgia, or any of the other 39 states that charge state income tax? Does your state claim you owe them any amount of back taxes? Or have you not filed in years? Is your heart pounding because you know they're wrong or you just don't have the money? Don't fight the state income tax board alone. The tax doctor is here to help you. The state is much more aggressive than the IRS in collecting taxes. They have the power to take your home, your car, your driver's Drivers and business licenses even garnish your wages, freeze your bank accounts, and go after your spouse. Solve all your income tax problems permanently and keep more of your hard-earned money. Make this 100% guaranteed risk-free call right now. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610.